Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is Almost Every Way to Cook a Burger. You can make a burger patty out of just about anything turkey, chicken, fish, even plants. But when most people think about a burger, they think about beef. And the character of a burger is very much determined by the cut of beef you use. Some people swear by lean sirloin, others by rich, fatty short rib, and some people love the full flavor that cuts like skirt steak offer. But for my money, it's all about good old fashioned chuck. Chuck comes from the shoulder of the cow, is super beefy and affordable, and naturally clocks in at about 80% meat and 20% fat exactly what you want for a burger with tons of flavor and plenty of juiciness. Once the meat is ground, it gets gently formed into a nice, tidy six ounce patty with a little divot in the center to keep it from shrinking up when it cooks. The biggest challenge when cooking a burger is getting as much caramelized crust as possible on the outside while nailing the perfect, juicy, medium rare to medium inside. And we're gonna try to do exactly that every way we can think of. Cast Iron Burger. All right, we've got our burger patty. We've got a preheated cast iron pan and we're gonna get a little bit of oil in there. We're gonna season our burger generously on both sides with kosher salt. The more fat meat has, the more salt it needs. Lay it down, press it gently, and cook it for about four minutes on each side. Beautiful. We've got nice caramelization on the outside with some crispy bits around here. Cutting into it, we got a nice wall of medium rare, very little gray, and the texture looks really nice and loose, very juicy. Mmm, amazing. The meat is succulent and tender. The exterior is salty and complex. Mm. This method may be straightforward, but it delivers. Grill pan burger. So now we're gonna use a grill pan, which is just a cast iron pan with ridges that mimic those of a grill. We're gonna brush it with oil to prevent sticking, season our patty, and cook it for about four minutes on each side. There you go. So you'll notice that the browning is concentrated along these lines where the meat was in contact with the ridges, but the rest is kinda gray. Not enough browning for my taste. The inside looks pretty perfect. Mm. I mean, it's tasty. But I'm not sure I see the point in the grill pan when the standard cast iron delivered such better browning. Pre-seasoned burger. You've probably noticed that we've been seasoning the outside of the patty, but not the inside. This time, we're gonna try to mix some salt into the ground meat itself. Salt our beef, knead it well to distribute, form our patty, and cook it for four minutes aside in this hot cast iron. Let's check it out. Time to try our salt inside burger experiment. It's plenty crispy looking, cutting it open. Okay, so this is interesting. It definitely cooked less evenly, and you can see how that outer layer is gray and kind of dense looking. That's because the salt actually breaks down proteins in the meat, causing it to stick to itself instead of being loose and tender. Mm. Yeah, the texture is much more like a sausage. It's bouncier and less tender. You know, I'm gonna stick to salting the outside of the burgers from now on. Frozen burger. Same patty, but this one's been frozen solid. We're gonna oil the pan, season our burger, and this is gonna cook for more like seven minutes per side. All right, let's check it out. Because this guy spent a bit more time in the pan, we got slightly more color, but nothing too significant. The inside is blushing and beautiful, but a bit more gray than our fresh patty. Mmm. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not an improvement on our fresh patty, but it can be done. Okay, let's go to the backyard so I can air my clothes out a bit. Gas grilled burger, three ways. We got three patties that have all been salted and oiled. We've got our gas grill. This first one is our standard beef patty. This one is frozen, so it's completely hard. And then this is another fresh patty that we're gonna put an ice cube on top of, allegedly to keep it moist, and apparently we're not supposed to flip it until it melts. We'll just take these off when they're done. Gas grilled burger. Revenge of the grill marks. You know, unless you got a killer gas grill, it's hard to produce even as much heat as a cast iron pan, so we're looking at way less browning. The interior, good color, but it does look a tad dry. Mm, yeah, I want a lot more browning. And because the heat was a bit lower, it lost some juice as it cooked. It's fine, but nothing to write home about. Gas grilled frozen burger. 
So this was on there for quite some time. It had to defrost and then cook through all the way. Cutting in, yeah, definitely less even, and you're seeing some kind of weird gradients. Mmm, huh. You know, it's a bit juicier than the last one, maybe because the fat was colder and rendered differently, but not a method I'd repeat unless I had to. Ice Cube Burger. I don't think that ice cube did anything at all. It certainly didn't help the exterior, and yeah. The inside is cooked pretty unevenly, probably because one side was colder. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, but it's certainly not juicier or better in any way. Water does not make food moist, people. Fat does. Charcoal Grilled Burger. All right, we got a burger that's been salted and oiled. We got a hot charcoal grill. We're just gonna lay this down right here. Okay, it's been about four minutes. Let's give it a flip. Looks done to me. Here we have our charcoal grilled burger. Got a nice sear on the outside. Definitely getting some of that charcoal smoky sort of smell. Wow, look at that. That's really beautifully cooked. Perfect medium rare, and it's still nice and juicy, you can tell. Mmm, that is just the taste of summer. Juicy beef, beautiful crust, that charcoal smoke flavor. Mm. This is so backyard iconic. This is a really great way to cook a burger. You know, it's getting kind of cold out here. I'm ready to head back into the kitchen. Hibachi grilled burger. So here we have a hibachi style grill. We're gonna salt our patty and let her rip. It's burning binchotan charcoal, which is special because it burns really, really hot and really cleanly. So we can do this inside under the hood without smoking up the place. Voila, hibachi burger. Wow, this smells great. Decent color, I'm pretty impressed with that grill. And the interior, love to see it. Looks pretty perfect. Mm, wow, the flavor is amazing. Could have gotten a little bit more of a crust, but the grill flavor is awesome. As the fat and the juices drip onto the charcoal, they kind of vaporize and perfume the meat in a really delicious way. Mm, yum. Butter seared burger. Back to cast iron, except this time, we're gonna grease our pan with a bit of butter. Season the patty, four minutes on each side. Should be good to go. Well, it smells buttery and delicious, but we're not seeing great caramelization, probably because of the water content of the butter. The inside, temp looks great, nothing to complain about. Mm, you know, I feel like I'm barely tasting the butter at all, and I'm missing that crust. It's not bad, but this didn't add all that much in my opinion. Steamed burger. I swear this is actually a thing. We've got our burger patty. We've got a steamer set in this pot of boiling water. We're just gonna lay it down right here, close the lid and come back in about eight minutes. Oh boy, that looks done all right. Definitely not all that appealing looking. Graytown, USA. No direct heat, no browning. And it really shrunk up a bit. Hmm, the inside looks Juicy, but we've got a fat gray ring all around it, probably because it was cooking from all sides at once. Mm. The texture isn't awful. It's weird to eat this much beef with no browning at all. Could be good with a slider patty, but this is pretty unpleasant to me. Toaster burger. Why not, right? Season this guy up, slide it into the toaster, and we'll see what comes out on the other side. Okay, well, it popped. Gonna get it out of there. <laughs> Oh god. Okay, just get some chopsticks. Take it out. I'm just gonna turn it upside down. A toaster burger. Wow. Well, we kind of scratched it up a little bit getting it out of the toaster. I'm not enamored of this exterior. I just don't think the heat was quite high enough. With that said, it looks a lot better than some of the burgers we've seen today. The inside actually looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It, it got to the right temperature, albeit a little rare. Fun fact, the place that claims to have invented the hamburger sandwich, Louie's Lunch in New Haven, Connecticut, uses weird vertical broilers that are not that different from a home toaster. Mm. Mm -hmm. Missing the browning, but it's certainly juicy. Eh, Could have been a lot worse for sure. Ironed burger. No room service burger is ever going to be hot and fresh enough for me. So if I'm staying in a hotel, I'm just going to fire up the iron, salt my burger generously on both sides with salt, spray it with the Pam that I snuck through airport security, and go to town. I'm going to flip it, finish the other side. Wow, okay. 
Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with what's going on here. The brownie is even, almost smash burger level, although I'm a bit concerned about the squishing and moisture loss. The inside, nice! This might be a sleeper hit. Mmm, that's a damn good burger. It's a bit drier than our standard smash burger, but honestly, it's better than a solid 70% of our methods. This is pretty great. Deep fried burger. We got a burger. We got a deep fryer. We're gonna season this bad boy on both sides and drop it into our fryer set to 350 degrees for about 12 minutes. Ta-da! I'm not impressed by the way this looks. We might have needed higher heat. Cutting into it, the temp isn't awful, but it has that same kind of gray ring all around the way that our steamed burger did, and I think that's because it was totally surrounded by heat. Mm. I mean, that's not horrible, but definitely not better than our cast iron burger. Not sure I would pull out the deep fryer for this one. Waffle burger. We had to do it, friends. Burger, salt, hit our waffle iron with some cooking spray, and do the damn thing. There's nothing I want to say. It's just depressing at this point. Oh, wow. Yep, mm, there it is. I mean, it looks kind of cool, to be honest. Decent color at those points of contact, but otherwise pretty pale. Yeah, that's seriously overcooked. We definitely squished the hell out of it, so it lost a lot of moisture. Oh, blah. It tastes like a cafeteria burger. It's so gross. Bad. Rotisserie burger. Okay, we're gonna take this apparatus. We're gonna strap our patty in. Try not to squish it too much. Okay. Get it in there, close the door, and get it spinning. And there's our rotisserie burger. So this is a situation. Looks like we lost quite a bit of juice, but the exterior isn't the worst we've seen today. Getting in there, definitely on the rarer side, really uneven. Mm, definitely way less juicy than our other burgers. It lost a lot of fat while I was spinning. And the outside doesn't have the depth of flavor I'm after. I'll save the rotisserie for chicken, thank you very much. Smash burger. Now for something a little different. We have a slightly smaller wad of ground beef. We've got our nicely seasoned diner griddle. And instead of making a patty, we're just gonna drop it on there and use a spatula to smash it flat. Hit it with salt, flip and season again. And there is our smash burger. The beautiful thing here is just how much caramelization we got on the outside. A beautiful, even layer of crispiness. Check that inside. Still nice and pink, good looking texture, but certainly more cooked than some of the others. Mmm, yum. This is definitely a favorite of mine. That exterior flavor is out of control and still plenty juicy and tender. I honestly think this is one of the most foolproof ways to make a delicious burger there is. It's like the platonic ideal of the roadside diner burger. Frozen smash burger. Okay, same thing, but this time we froze our wad of beef for about 15 minutes to get it good and cold, which some people say produces a better smash burger. Squish it good, flip, and let's check it out. Good color here, but not quite as good as our first smash burger, maybe because the meat took longer to heat up. The inside, a bit more rare, not bad looking. Mm, honestly, it's hard to tell the difference. I'd heard that chilling the meat would prevent fat from rendering out, but I'm not buying it. Onion smash burger. Okay, spoiler alert, this is one of my favorite burgers of all time. An homage to a place called White Mana in Hackensack, New Jersey. We're gonna put our beef down, shower it with thinly sliced onions, smash it, season with salt, flip it, more salt, and there it is. Beautiful, even crust, love to see it. What's really interesting is what's going on on the other side though. It kind of steamed in the onion juices. God, it smells amazing. The inside looks nice, just like our other Smashburgs. Mmm, so, so good. It's like a Smashburger wearing onion perfume. So much flavor, heaven. Okay, let's head back outside, shall we? Grilled Smashburger. Can we make a smash burger on a grill? We're gonna try. We're gonna smash our ball of beef onto this grill heated griddle and let it do its thing. Looks good to me. So here we have our al fresco smash burger. Great crispy caramelization on this side, just like our stovetop versions. The inside looks great. Mm. Yum. 
pretty much exactly what we got indoors, but with better scenery. If I'm cooking burgers on a gas grill, this is definitely my preferred way to do it. Smoked burger. Smoke them if you got them. We got our burger. We got our smoker. Let's do this thing. <coughs> okay then. Not a whole lot of browning going on. It's definitely darkened somewhat, but the temp was too low to get any real browning. Smells smoky though. The inside, well, looks pretty even, but also maybe very rare. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it's smoky all right. The smidge dried out and really missing that crust. It probably would have been better if we seared it afterwards or smoked it at a higher temp or something like that. Searsall burger. Okay, we're gonna cook this here patty with a searsall, which is basically just a fancied up blowtorch. I'm gonna sit down for this one. Get the other side. All right, let's check this out. So the browning is kind of concentrated in a few areas. We've got some charred, burned bits. You know, the sears all is really more for finishing already cooked things than cooking them through. The inside is pretty raw. Yikes. Mm. Uh, you know, it's too rare for me. It's cold in the middle. No thanks. Yeah, this seems like a good time to head back into the kitchen. Sous V burger. Now we're gonna get fancy and sciency and sous vide burger. We're gonna slide our patty into this bag and then suck all the air out and seal it. Now we're gonna place it in this pot that's fitted with an immersion circulator, which will keep it at a consistent 120 degrees. We're gonna check on this in about 45 minutes. Phase one complete. Now we'll cut open our bag, get a little oil into our preheated pan, dry our burger off and sear it hard on both sides. All right, looks good to go. Here we have our sous vide and seared burger. I'm a little disappointed by how little color we got here, but I was afraid to take it further because the inside was already up to temp. Cutting in, yeah, not loving that. Sous vide cooking is way better for a bigger cut of meat, not a quick cooking one like this. Mmm, yeah, totally fine, a little overcooked. Yeah, the payoff just isn't there. Microwaved burger. They're making me do this in case you hadn't guessed. We got a microwave, we got a burger patty, we're gonna season it, transfer it to a plate, pop it in, and cook it for two and a half minutes. Oh lord, that's gotta be done. So, here is our burger cooked with low level radiation. It looks really gnarly and clearly lost a lot of its juice. No browning to speak of, and it's a little pink in the middle, but it cooked really unevenly. Let's get this over with. Mm. Well, it tastes like beef. It's definitely worse than our steamed burger. Ugh, no reason to cook a burger this way, period. Dehydrated burger. Why do people climb Mount Everest? Because it's there. Season it with salt, open this dehydrator up, get our burger in there, shut it, and we're gonna let it go at 158 degrees for four and a half hours. Let's check it out. That is something, all right. This looks pretty disturbing. It's very dark, almost like a black bean burger or something like that. Let's take a look at the inside. Wow, I mean, it looks kind of good. I'm honestly kind of scared to eat this because it's been in the danger zone for so long. I really hope I don't get sick. Mm. Oh, no. The exterior is like leather. It's so weirdly tough. Ah, bad. Do not do this. Tartar burger. Okay, we've cooked a lot of burgers at this point, so now we're gonna try not cooking one at all. Here we've got some ground chuck. We're gonna add an egg yolk, some diced onion, some salt, a little olive oil. We're making a very minimal tartare here. Form it into a patty, and there's our tartare burger. Obviously, this is raw, just beef with mix-ins. I'm gonna cut it in half, which is pretty unnecessary. Yep, still raw beef. You know, I love steak tartare, but for some reason it's kind of daunting on a bun. Mmm, it's totally delicious. It would be a lot better if this bun was toasted to create some texture and temperature contrast. I don't think I could eat this whole thing. It's a really cool way to eat beef. Pan chopped burger. Now we're gonna do something a little different. Here we have six ounces of chuck that we've frozen a bit to firm up, and then we're gonna cut it by hand into a nice even quarter inch dice. Now we're gonna form it into a nice loose patty, get some oil into our pan, season the hell out of it, and cook it for about four minutes per side. Beautiful. 
That exterior is really gorgeous. The roughness of the chopped meat created a lot of surface area, so you have lots of browning and these nice crispy craggy bits. The inside is not as evenly cooked as some of our ground patties, but it looks really juicy and I love how kind of loosely textured it is. Mmm, that tastes amazing. So beefy and moist. And the texture is so different and fantastic. It just kind of falls apart in your mouth. Definitely labor intensive, but a really cool take on a burger for sure. Mix in burger three ways. So we've already established that we do not like to mix salt into our burgers, but there are a whole lot of things that people add to burgers that they swear make them better. In this one, we're gonna add some cold cubes of butter. Then we're gonna add some mayo to this one. And this last one is gonna get a few tablespoons of smooth peanut butter. Gosh, this looks gross. Form these into patties, season each one with salt, and get these guys on the heat. All right, let's take a look. Butter burger. I mean, it looks like a nicely caramelized burger, and I think that has to do with the milk solids and the butter rendering out and browning, which is interesting. The interior is nicely cooked, but it seems like there are some pockets where butter used to be. Mmm, it's good. Juicy, but not juicier than a regular burger. And I think most of the butter just kind of rendered out into the pan. I'd rather put some butter on the bun, honestly. I'm not sure if this is a win. Mayo burger. I'm actually kind of psyched on this because I love mayonnaise on a burger, so maybe I'll like it in it. The texture seems a little bit on the loose side, and we got good color because of the egg and the sugar in the mayo. Cutting in, hmm. Oddly, it looks more well done, even though it cooked for the same amount of time. Hmm. Oh. I don't think it's better than our standard patty. I'm not sure the mayo added anything. I'd much rather just have mayo on the bun. Peanut butter burger. This got really crusty, and again, I think that's because there are naturally occurring sugars in the peanut butter that encourage caramelization. Nice kind of crispy, craggy bits here, and it smells kind of nutty, I guess? The inside looks pretty nice, although a little less even. Mmm. Oof. That is weird. It tastes like eating a burger and smelling someone's PB&J at the same time. I do not like that. Moral of the story, no mix-ins, people. Juicy Lucy. I know I just said that I don't want things in my burger, but we're gonna try out a Minnesota specialty known as a Juicy Lucy. We're gonna form two patties out of this beef, put some American cheese in there, and press it gently to seal. Season, cook it in our hot cast iron for about four minutes on each side, and that, my friends, is a Juicy Lucy. Liking the color here, but the shape is funky. We couldn't make our little dimple in the middle, so it shrunk up a bit. But the interior is supposed to really be the exciting part. And there it is, melty, oozy cheese. The temp is still pretty nice. Mmm, it tastes great. I love American cheese on a burger, so why not in it? At the same time, I wouldn't say it tastes better than a regular cheeseburger, but it's a cool party trick for sure. Baked burger. Oven time. This burger is salted and oiled, and we're gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And that, my friends, is a baked burger. Pretty uninspiring looking. It's gray, and it feels a little bit leathery. The inside, really uneven. You can see that this side got more heat from the sheet pan, and this side, not so much. Ugh. Mm. Honestly, it tastes really similar to our steamed burger. I hate how the top is almost raw and the bottom is well done. Yuck. Roasted burger. So baked was a bust. Now we're going to increase the heat and decrease the time. 475 degrees for about seven minutes. That should do it. Somehow this looks almost less cooked than our baked burger. Again, it's super uneven way more cooked down here than it is up here. The metal is just such a better conductor of heat than the air is. I'm not excited about this. Mm. Yeah, a whole lot of textures going on here and none of them are good. It's a more exaggerated version of our baked burger. No bueno. Broiled burger. Broiler time. We're gonna put our patty in there for about six minutes and see what comes out the other side. Okay, that looks about done. So, a lot of restaurants broil their burgers, but they have much more powerful units. Our home broiler, not so much. Hardly any browning on top, and the bottom ain't much to look at either. The inside actually looks better than our other oven methods, but it definitely shrunk up in a funky way. It's kind of loosey-goosey. Mmm. Yeah. I'm not into how gray this tastes. Juicy, but seriously lacking in browned burger flavor.
you know, this oven doesn't seem to be working too well for us, but why don't we try the Easy Bake Oven Burger? All right, folks, we got a mini burger patty. We got our Easy Bake Oven. It actually feels kind of warm. We're gonna salt it, get it onto this special little tray, and slide it in. And now we're gonna use this ridiculous tool here too. Ew, I mean, ew, but also kind of cute. Obviously, this burger is a little too small for this bun. It's definitely cooked looking, but it's just a little puck of beef, and that underside is very unappealing looking. I mean, it was cooked with a light bulb. The inside actually still has some pink to it, which is a little disturbing. Mm. Oof. It tastes like the burgers they served in my middle school cafeteria with a hint of burning plastic. Nasty. Pan to oven burger. This one's a twofer. We got a hot pan, we're gonna get a little oil in it, season our burger, and then sear it on both sides just to get a crust on it. Then we're gonna transfer it to this rack and finish it in the oven. Voila! So it didn't get any new color in the oven, and since we were trying not to overcook the burger on the stove, we pulled it before we got the kind of crust we wanted. The inside looks pretty nicely cooked, a little bit of gray around the edges. Hmm. It's not bad by any means, but I'm missing that crust, and this wasn't better than if we had just given it another few minutes in the pan. Reverse seared burger. Okay, let's try to do the exact opposite. This burger we oiled and salted, and we're gonna put it into this 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes, just until the inside is rare. Then we're gonna take it out, and now that it's fully cooked, we're gonna sear it in a hot pan for a minute or so on each side, just to get some color. Reverse seared burger. The exterior here is quite appealing. Browning is a lot easier to achieve when the outside has been given a head start in the oven. And that interior, very pretty. Nice and even, hardly any gray at all, and very juicy looking. Mm, that's really nice. Much better than our sous vide or our panned oven. That said, it's not markedly better than our pan seared burger, and it took longer, so I'm not sure I see the point in any of these two step methods, honestly. You know, I think I'm ready for a little fresh air. Fire pit burger, three ways. All right, we've got three burgers here. This first one, we're gonna put on this preheated lava stone. This one, we're gonna put on this rack directly on top of the coals. And this foil wrapped burger is gonna go right here. We're gonna come back, flip these halfway through and take them off as they're ready. Lava stone burger. You can tell that lava stone was super heated. Look at that gorgeous browning. That stone provided really direct heat and protection from flare-ups at the same time, which we love. And the inside looks great. A hair overcooked, but that's really my fault. Mm, that crust is amazing. So flavorful, and just the faintest whisper of wood smoke. I really like this method. Yum. Wood grilled burger. So this one was cooked directly over the coals and it shows very aggressive caramelization, a little charring even, really nice. The inside, it's really pretty, a smidge overcooked again, but that's my bad. Mm, really tasty, big wood smoke energy, yum. A bit less juicy than our lava stone burger, no, still excellent. The fire pit is definitely overperforming. Foil packet burger. Well, first things first, we gotta get it open. Damn, this is wrapped up tight. Ooh, yeah, that's not nice. Kind of raw over here. I mean, it just kind of steamed in that packet because there was nowhere for the moisture to go. Let's cut into it. Ooh, yeah, ugly interior. Very rare over here, more cooked over here. Ugh, yeah, no, not a good method. No need to waste good foil to make a bad burger. Yuck. George Foreman burger. The lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. We're gonna season our burg, spray our George Foreman with a little cooking spray, get our patty in, and close it up. All right, let's give it a try. So, we've got some grill marks, reminiscent of our grill pan burger. I'm concerned about how squished it looks, though. The inside, yeah, that's overcooked. Definitely in medium well territory. Mm, yeah, that's pretty dry and grainy. I mean, the promise of the George Foreman grill is that it squishes the fat and juice out of the meat and lets it run off, which is not a good burger make, in my opinion. Miss me with this one. Air fried burger. 
We got our burger patty, we got our droid thing. Salt both sides, brush it with a little bit of oil, open up our weirdo box and flop our burger in. That's gonna cook at 350 degrees for, I don't know, some time. Give it a flip. And there's our air fried burger. This looks truly awful. The outside just looks desiccated. Cutting it open, well, it's cooked to temperature, but there's definitely some graying around the edges, a product of that ambient, indirect heat. Mm. That's not a good burger. I hate that thing. Ugh. Okay, today we cooked a whole lot of burgers a whole lot of ways. What did we learn? Well, at the end of the day, a good burger is one of life's simple pleasures, and as such, our more straightforward methods ended up yielding the best results. No need to make things too complicated. All you need is quality beef, high heat, and maybe a little smoke, and you've got the kind of burger that dreams are made of. Have a favorite way to cook a burger that you didn't see here today? Leave it in the comments.